Open World and welcome to the Complete Guide to Master Serum. Today we are going to be getting into the Wavetable Editor of Serum. Now, I'm not going to lie, guys. When it comes to the Wavetable Editor of Serum, I'm not an expert. However, in, when it comes to creating good Wavetables, I can guide you on how to do it in my own way. Now, we are going to be utilizing the Wavetable Editor for this. However, we're not going to be utilizing certain things from it. We, um, and what I mean by that is, in the Wavetable Editor, you can create Wavetables from scratch, uh, where you have nothing. And you can create something by drawing it in, uh, which you can see on your left side here. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about where everything is located in the Wavetable Editor and what some of the single processes and more features you can see here do, which is going to be very useful when you're creating your own Wavetables, okay? Now, the first thing that you have to note here is the grid size, which is very important. The lower the grid size, the less you're going to be able to fine-tune the Wavetable. Let's say I have a one one grid size and I use this guy here. Well, I can create that. one one boom. I can create a sign. I can create a sign. I can create this. I can create this. I don't know what I would call that. I can create a, a sign saw hybrid, which is a lot more subby. I can create the inversion of that. I can smoothen this out. So, you know, do a lot of cool stuff with that. But essentially, that's what the grid size is for. Now, to the left of that, we're going to have here our wavetable number. What that means is what wave, how many wavetables we have. You can create some by clicking the plus, and you can have up to a total of 256 different wave table positions uh minus deletes it as you can see here we have our copy and paste so let's say we have something like this we create a new wave table here and let's assume that there's nothing there i can copy this guy and then paste it there. okay uh to the right of that here we're gonna have our undo and our redo we're gonna have formulas here which you can enter if you know math on how to create these waveforms or you can use some of the ones steve duda has provided i generally use these however because i never found use for them uh you can create a saw high pass saw use multis and vice versa if you want to use those okay at the top we're going to have our additive synthesis part which i stated i really don't know how to use and i recommend that you guys watch a tutorial on it if you want to i have yet to find a good one which explains it really good to me where i can make something out of my top of my head so i rarely bother with it so i'm not going to be able to explain that for you guys at the top left of that we have our oscillator a and our oscillator b so we can switch between the oscillators and this is going to be useful for the way that i create my wave tables and then here we're going to have a zoom feature for our bin okay uh, with that being said, to the left, we're going to have our tools for writing in our wave tables. Let's say we want to create a saw, like I stated. The grid size is very important. You can do a uh, saw kind of vibes going to the right, to the left. Uh, sign, little sine wave. Uh, we can do the little cosine. Uh, we can do smoothen this out here with this guy here, which is sort of like a kind of like a saw. Kind of, let's just call it a, a writing tool, but it's a little bit more smooth. Okay, then we have the reverse of that. Okay, and then here we're going to have something which smoothens this out. Pretty much makes it just straight across. And then we're going to have the inversion of that or the more smoother signy version of it. As you can see, it creates these sort of like mountains. Okay, below that we have our amplitude control for each specific grid. We, and what I mean by amplitude is going to be in that specific section how high up or how low it, it is in terms of amplitude. Uh, then here we're going to have the spectral, which is cool in a way. This sounds very wavetable-ish, and it gives a spectral vibe, and I'll show you guys what that means once we get into the morphs. Okay, you can pull down to apply the effect more smoothly, so that way, let's say you have a sine wave, uh, and we're going to do that here. Then we can apply this and slowly degrade it in quality or give it a spectral vibe. Okay, here we're going to have whatever you do to the left side, you do to the right. So let's say I have this. You can see it's sort of like a mirror. Okay, uh, that's going to be all our editors there in the way that we're going to draw stuff in. I call them different writing tools. Like when you use MS Paint, you have the big circle, the little circle, a pencil tool, and vice versa. Uh, same thing here. Again, if you want to create more fine tuning, then make the grid size a lot higher. <laughs> you can do a lot of cool stuff here with this single one. You can just create like... Okay, cool. 
Okay, now at the top here, we're going to have our single processes. What that means is that if we have a multiple amount of wavetable positions, as you can see, uh, when I use a single one here, then essentially what's happening is I'm just doing it to the one wavetable position I'm at. So single here, we're going to normalize. This is going to make it so that the top goes higher and the bottom goes lower. And the moment it touches, one of the parts of this wavetable touches, and that's when it stops. So let's assume here I have this, and I normalize that. You can see this went more dark, and that's what, what we created. I can normalize again, but it won't do anything. Let's say I have this and I normalize uh, this. Let's assume that and we normalize that. You can see this hit the top first now. So this move shifts a little bit there like that. It's supposed to make it so that it's as loud as it can be and it's not so quiet. Next, we have remove DC offset, which I really don't know what it does. But what I feel like it does is it kind of centers it a lot more. It moves a little bit of this into the center. It's supposed to remove bias, which I don't know what that means. I read the manual on what it does, but I've never found use for remove DC offset. They said that you regular, um, you rarely need it. Below that, we can flip vertically, which is a polarity inverse. Uh, we can flip horizontally, and then we can flip horizontally with a zero crossing, which is useful. As you can see, when I use that guy here, we have now this kind of dodge coming down all the way down. Okay, if I do that again, let's assume I have something like this. And let's move this guy up here and just do shift tilt. Uh, it creates a crossing. So we have a smoother transition as the wave table moves to the right there. Uh, as we move down, we have our init silence. So we get nothing there. And then below that, we're going to have our fade edges. Now, the fade edges is super useful. Let's say we have something like this where um, it doesn't make any sense in the way this is going to transition from here to here. Then we can create a fade edge on the side here, as you can see. So it's transitions a lot smoother because remember when you play a wave table depending on what pitch it is it's going to do the shape and it's going to repeat and repeat so you really want to have a smooth transition when you move from here back to here okay here we're going to have x fade edges so it's a little bit different uh, if we have a lower grid size here let's assume like a, a one to one or a nine to nine or some weird stuff there and we have something like this and we do this you can see it's smoother there depending on the grid size and then we can do an X which is a little different there okay below that we're gonna have the sample redux at grid size so if I have let's say four to four I can in the quality of this kind of gets shifted down in each grid if I have this a lot higher and I do it again it does it a little bit more forcefully now the redux effect is gonna be sort of like a down sample in the fact that it degrades the quality of a saw makes it 16 bit 8 bit vice versa now, to the right of that, we have the process. Now, the process is going to work on the whole wavetable. So, let's say I here I have a, a, a wavetable from Evo. Okay, let's say we use this one. Okay. A anything I do here in the process is going to affect all of these wavetables, okay? So, process, we have normalize each, which is going to normalize each individual waveform dependent on its own position. If I do normalize max from all frames it's going to look at all of them and find a normalization where it normalizes all the wavetables if one of them reaches the top and it only increases by 2 db boost all of them will get increased by a 2 db boost however if you do the other one which is a normalize each then let's say one of them gets boosted by 10 because it's so damn quiet the other one isn't going to get boosted by 10 it's going to get boosted dependent on what it needs okay that is the biggest thing here very useful when you're making wavetables where you want them to all sound equally as loud Okay, now as we move down from that, we have flip vertical, flip horizontal, fade edges, X fade edges, and vice versa. Those you already know what they do. Similar to the single, except it does it to all of them, which is, again, very useful. One new things, new things we get here, we have remove fundamental, which is a high pass filter to the sound. It kind of puts a high pass filter, makes it so it's not as subby. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but that's essentially what that is doing. Then we have a sample redux for all of it. Now the next one we have is resize tables to half. So two times total number. What that means is that we're gonna create double the amount of waveforms or wavetable positions because we're gonna cut this down the line and make this a new wavetable. So if I do it right now, and I do um, if I do two times total number, you can see from four to eight, and now here saw bottom part of the saw and vice versa. Okay, uh, we can redo that with the next one, which is half total number. So let's say I have four wavetables. I can push it close together so the wave uh, the wavetables get divided by two. So now we only have two because now we've added them together okay uh, below that we're gonna have create PWM from this table to all so if I have this wave table I can click process create PWM and now this wave table has a PWM going from the center pushing it to the left which we talked about from the warp section 
okay below that we have other things like set spectra this frame to all vice versa um these are kind of new ones that have been added into serum i really don't know what they do so i can't talk but one thing you do want to do is make sure your phase is, is correct in all of these guys so it's a lot smoother throughout um that's something that is very important you want to you don't want to have a change from wavetables at different phases because that's going to sound really bad okay from that we have to the right the morph which is super useful in the way that i make wavetables in that way i'm going to teach you to do them as it's going to help a lot but let's assume here that we only have you know a few wavetables let's pretty much click here add or remove in it all and we just have a song let's create a new waveform here like this Morph is going to allow us to create a crossfade. So here from 1 to 2, it's going to create a crossfade of 256 wavetable positions. So if I do a crossfade, think of a DJ as you gradually move from one waveform to the other. If you do a spectral, it gives you that spectral sound. If you remember, we talked about it uh, as you crossfade. Okay, these different morphs are just going to give you different vibes in the sense of how it crossfades between each waveform. And it does it in a smooth way, and that is the important thing. As you only need to create two wavetable positions to create a full out waveform that you can kind of move around to get something smooth. Now below here we have remove morph table, so that way you can go back to your one and your two, or you can just undo it. Now the next section, guys, I feel like is very self-explanatory. It uses a bit of like lingo that you might not understand. But for instance, here remove beginning to select. Let's say I choose number four here and I remove beginning to select it. Well, I'm gonna remove the first one and I'm gonna be left with the last two. The reduce to section is just in case you have, let's say, here a couple of waveforms and you just want to keep one half of them. You divide it by two and vice versa. Okay. Here we're gonna be able to sort depending on certain elements. Think of it as sort of like your kind of like sorting by uh, like when you have your folder open, you can sort by the type, you can sort by the name, the file size. This is what that's going to do depending on certain elements here, like the peak amount, the peak spectrum, average spectrum and, and vice versa. OK, the sort section, guys, is just going to be where you want to sort stuff. Think of it like your folder. You can sort by the type, by the name, by the file size. Same thing here. We can import our wavetables here and I'll, I'll, I recommend that you guys read the manual for this section as that's going to help out a lot in choosing which one you want to go with. And we can also export our wavetable as 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit if you want to give them away to someone or you want to sell them. But with that being said, guys, that is going to be pretty much the wavetable editor. Now, let me show you how I make my wavetables, which is a lot easier. Now, the first thing here, guys, that you have to keep in mind is that you do have a lot of access to source material inside of Serum already with the wavetables it has. What I mean by this is that if you go through every wavetable, you can pick different places in it. Let's say you like this one. Cool. Now, in Oscillator B, we can pick another wavetable that we think is pretty cool. Let's assume this one. And what I can do is I can go back to the wavetable editor. I can go to Oscillator B, go to the position I liked it at. Let's say there, I can copy that. we we'll go back to oscillator A. I can remove here all but selected. So remove uh, all but selected here. And then I can create a wavetable here. And let's, uh, let's remove morph tables there. And now I can paste that wavetable. And I have those two there. Now let's assume I want to create this into a four-piece wavetable. Well, now I can go here, go find another one. Let's assume this one. Again, we just copy that position back to oscillator A, add a new one, paste it there. We have there. Let's add one more. So oscillator B, let's go here. That one sounds pretty cool. Let's copy it, go back there, and then we're going to add that there. Now, once we have these four, we can go into morph and we can do a crossfade. Okay, we can do a, a crossfade spectral. And we create something that is very smooth. And again, you can do this with anything. Now, that's one way of making your wavetables, and it's the easier format. The next way... Now, the other cool way, guys, is to create FM wavetables. And these are a little bit harder, but I'm going to show you guys how to do it. And, and it requires something that we need to use from the menu. So let's say here we have an FM, wave uh, FM sound, like let's say this one. Okay, I'm going to click here menu, resample to oscillator B. So what's going to happen is this FM here, it's going to get resampled here. So now I have the waveform of this one that I recreated here. As you can see, this one's off. Okay, so now we have that there. Now here I can click this guy and then just copy that. And now I'm going to create another FM wavetable. So here I'm going to go digital, WA tech, let's say. Let's make this loud here, close this down. 
Let's put this in. Uh, there, that one sounds sick. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. Copy, um, resample to oscillator beat. So now we have that waveform there. Let's put that to zero. Let's say I want to start from a sine wave for some reason. Add a remove. We're going to remove this one all but select it. We're going to create a new waveform here. We're going to paste that. This is going to be the first one we created. And now we're going to create a new one. We're going to go back to oscillator B. We're going to copy that oscillator A. And now we're going to paste that there. So now we have two different ones here. And now we can go between them here. Let's put this up. Okay. And now I can create a morph. So now when I want to make a sound, let's say I like that, I can put my LFO on. Monolegato it. Okay, very cool as you guys can see. I know that, that you guys are seeing this, you're like, whoa, that's kind of cool, right? But that's the way I like to create wavetables. It's a lot easier as you guys can see because you can create wavetables using the warps inside of Serum. Now, let's say that you have a saw. Uh, let's say that you want to remap it. So you create, let's say, something like this to it. Okay, here we can render oscillator A warp. But that means is this is going to go into my wavetable position. So if I do render to oscillator o warp, now my wavetable position is a remap. So now I can switch this guy up into something else like a sync. So that way I have my remap. And then now I can add a sync here effect. Now let's say I have that. Now I can have that. Now let's take it further. Let's say I want the sync there. Now I can resample oscillator to warp. So now I have here a sync. And let's assume I make the waveform. Cool. And now let's say I want to do a bend minus to it. Like that. Then I can choose it here. Resample to oscillator to warp. Have it there. And now I can add, let's say, like a bend or another sync or an A. And now I can maybe do some cool stuff like this where I have this. We can have that. Okay. And similar to the last way, guys, you can copy certain wavetable positions. Like if you do a remap, uh, let's say a remap one again, and we do this to it and we have it here. We can render to oscillator a warp here. We can go here, copy that one because we like it. And now we can create you know let's say here on this guy we can make a new one paste that there so that's one position now let's put the volume down on that let's create another position maybe like a sync let's say that we can run the to oscillate a warp now pick our position we like copy that go back to oscillator b make a new position paste that okay cool let's assume that's what we want and then we can create this sort of morph. And now we have. Now, again, if you want to add movement to this, bend minor. You can do so. And again, guys, you can create as many wavetable positions as you need and create a cross rate up to like 10, up to 20. It's up to you to do that. But that's how we would create wavetables, guys. And in the menu, you're going to find all that. Resample to oscillator A, as you guys saw. And we have this here. If I resample this to oscillator A, you're going to see the same wave. I can't have a wavetable position because it's not going to give it to me. Uh, but it's going to resample this guy here so that we have that waveform. Uh, if we do a render oscillator A warp or B, that means that if I have here a sync and I want to have it here on the wavetable position instead, I can render to oscillator A warp. So that way we have the warp here, the sync. Uh, and render to oscillator B warp. And there you go. Okay, so there's a lot of cool things you guys can do, as you guys can see. But that is how we would create wavetables, guys. I didn't go over the bin. As I told you guys, I'm not in a pro on it. But hopefully, the way I showed you guys how to make wavetables makes you in makes it more interesting for you and a lot easier. Remember, you can import different wavetables. Uh, you can import di different material, uh, wave samples, so that you can create different wavetables this way, which is a lot easier and a lot more intuitive, in my opinion. If you look at a lot of the wavetables, like the spectral ones, they're just going to crossfade. 
between different sounds and the key is to find different cool variations that you can do which will give you those effects but that being said guys that is the end of this video i'll see you guys next time you guys take care and peace out